Well, quick, I say the word escalator. And what do you picture? Well, maybe you picture an escalator at the Four Seasons Mall, or maybe one of the ones in the subways of New York, or one of the ones in this busy Christmas season of traveling that takes you down to the underground transportation mall in the Atlanta airport. But what I picture is the world's longest freestanding escalator. It is in the atrium of the Omni Hotel CNN Center in Atlanta. You see, growing up as a child in Atlanta, I remember the year that that escalator first opened. It was 1976, and it was the only way that one could enter the wonderful world of Sid and Marty Croft, the world's first and last all-indoor amusement park. Well, for those of you who don't remember who Sid and Marty Croft were, they were the kings of children's programming on Saturday mornings in the 70s. They brought us the likes of the Banana Splits, H.R. Puffin Stuff and Witchy Poo, Wonder Bug, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, and also Land of the Lost, which in 2009 was made into a full-length motion picture. The escalator that I'm talking about is just over 205 feet long. It takes you up eight floors, and it is only supported at the bottom and at the top. There is nothing underneath it. And it takes several minutes to ride all the way up those eight floors. Several minutes in which the riders think about and pray about the fact that there is no structure underneath this elevator supporting it. And you, for that whole expanse. Well, there's a 1980 song by Robert Hazard that has these lyrics. We're dancing on the escalator of life. Won't be happy till we have it all. Think about that for a minute. Escalator of life. It's a vivid image because escalators convey people together. They're people movers. In the United States in 2004, almost 9 billion people were moved by 30,000 escalators. Escalators have their own momentum. Once you are on them, you are moving and you can't really stop and get off until you have arrived at the end. If you want to arrive, then you have to stay on. And if you want to arrive faster, then you have to sort of muscle your way through. But is the escalator of life going up or is it going down? Well, the world says up, of course. That is the popular direction, isn't it? Everything important in life is about moving up. You start at the bottom and you move up to the top or at least as high as you can go. At the bottom, you are a nothing, you're nobody. But as you go up, you become somebody. Moving up implies increased status and significance and wealth and popularity. Ever since Adam and Eve, that's how human life works. In school, in careers, in relationships, even here at church, the escalator of life moves up, and likely as not, you and I are going to have to do a bit of pushing and shoving if we're going to make it as high and as fast as we can. The higher up we go, the more pride, the more power, the more status, the more significance you and I have. Ever since Adam and Eve, that's how human life works. The moving up creed says, Do everything out of selfish ambition and vain conceit and in pride. Consider others worse than yourself. Understand that in order to move up yourself, you must move others down. Every person for him or herself. No one cares about you but you. So get ahead. To get ahead, you've got to take care of yourself first. And others last, if at all. And as you and I rise higher... We can say to ourselves, I don't need to be humble. Look at me. Look at what I've accomplished. Yes, it is true. I am 
that good. At the bottom, humility is a given. At the top, it is time to throw your weight around because you've arrived. If you've got it, flaunt it. You're a winner. You're a success. You're a person of value. The world applauds you. Ever since Adam and Eve, that's the way that our escalator world works. But today I want to pose a dangerous question or two. Is this the only way of the world? Could there be another way of living? Is a different direction possible? Enter Advent. Enter Christmas, enter the Son of God into the world, enter Paul's hymn, his Christmas carol, if you will, that is recorded in Philippians 2, 6 through 11, that talks about how God being born in human flesh has given us a new, a different, and better way. Enter Philippians 2, 1 to 11, that proclaims that God has come downstairs, not up, and has changed the direction of human life forever. See, ever since Adam and Eve, getting to the top with pride and power and bragging rights was the way to live. But Jesus reverses that direction. In Jesus, God chooses to go down to show us a new way of service and humility, a new set of values and a new way of living. Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Jesus is 100% God, 100% human. That's what we celebrate each year at Christmas. From his birth on, you and I get glimpses of Jesus' di divinity. Angels and angel choirs announcing his birth. Royal gifts from the wise men. The miracles Jesus performed during his adult ministry. Yet Jesus refuses to use his power, his status, and glory to benefit himself. It was always possible. Every day of his life for Jesus to assert himself. But incomprehensibly, Jesus never does. Jesus did not count equality with God something to be grasped. Jesus came downstairs, not up. With Mary and at Bethlehem, Jesus goes down to nothing. That's what the Christmas story tells us if we will step back a bit and not get overly sentimental about it. The Almighty God, creator of the universe, was born into the world through an unwed, pregnant teenager. God was born into the world in an outbuilding and placed in a feed box for barnyard animals. God was born into the world on the margins of significance, power, and wealth. And yes, shepherds and wise men enter the story, but almost immediately, Jesus and his family become undocumented, illegal aliens, refugees in Egypt, before moving to a little country hick town of Nazareth in the backwater of Galilee. Whenever you and I see the faces of poor, displaced nobodies on the nightly news, we should remember that God began his human existence just like this.